All right, so now let's see uh, array in action. How do we put together an array? Well, I've started one, and it looks like I don't know where I spelled mammoth, M-M-A-T. I tried to copy in some code mammoth ahead of time so that I wouldn't have to fat finger, and I fat fingered in a copy and paste, so figure that one out. Anyway, so what we've done here is I've created a array, and it's an array of animals. And there's different ways to create the array, but what we're doing in this particular scenario is we're starting off simple and we'll build up a little bit. I'm creating a array of strings. So I have a data type of string. I'm going to call this array or the variable that's going to contain all of my data values. I'm going to call that animals. And then you can see that animals is followed by an open and closed square bracket and it's empty at the moment. So anytime you declare a array, you have to decide ahead of time how many elements, how many things am I going to keep in that array potentially. In this case, I'm just filling that array at the very beginning. So I've already given this array some values and I put them in open and closed curly brace. So this is initializing an array, giving an array values at the time that you create it. So this particular array has four strings in it. It has dog, cat, mammoth, and fish. And so if I wanted to display one of these elements, I would use the C out command and then type in the name of the array, which is animals, and then put the square brackets, open and close square brackets, and then use the element number for the item that I want to display. In other words, if I put a zero in here and then the semicolon, then what's going to be output is the first element, the zero element, the zero position of this array. So I should get output dog. And we should see a dog in a minute. Nice. So in order to get at each of these elements, we utilize its position or element or index number are all words you might hear that are identifying simply in the order of the list, in the order of this listing, what number is each of these elements, and it starts at zero, one, two, and three, and so that's the one I want to print out. If I just print out animals, I'm not getting the individual pieces, so you have to have the element number of the item you want to print out. So if I wanted to print out fish, for example, that's element number zero, one, two, three, and so I would use the three here. And then potentially that should now print out the, di the dish, the fish. All right, so if I wanted to print out all of the elements in the array, I think I could probably do C out elements of zero. I mean, I could, and then I could copy and paste this and, you know, do this for each one. And that's just getting messy and it's getting complicated. That's gonna take a lot. So if I had 100 elements in this array, that's gonna take a lot of work. And remember that our job is, if we find ourselves repeating ourselves over and over again, there's gotta be a better way to make this happen. And in fact, there is. So I'm just gonna comment these out because this really isn't the ideal way to print out all of the animals in this array. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize a for loop. And we used a for loop last week, so I'm going to utilize that again today. So remember that the, the uh, syntax is for, and then in parentheses we have, I'm just going to type out some things and then I'll get back to what I'm doing here. I'm going to do i equals zero, i less than four, because I have four elements in the array. And let me just kind of uh, explain what I've done here. So initialize my i to zero. So that's our first, the very first thing that will happen in our for loop. Then we're going to evaluate is i less than four. And as long as i is less than four, we're going to do what's ever in these curly braces. So i initially was zero. So i is definitely less than four. So we're going to go in and do something in these curly braces. And then remember that this is going to increment i by one. And so then uh, I will be one less than four. And as long as we keep incrementing I, and as long as I is less than four, we will go into the curly braces. And the reason I chose four was because that's how many elements I have in the array. So this is element zero, one, two, and three by number, but by count, I have four elements in this array. And so that's where I'm headed. So let's just start off easy and see out I'm going to see out i just so I can see this build up. So what you should see is every time we loop through this for loop that I'm getting 
the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's see that happen. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. That makes sense because as soon as I was 4, 4 isn't less than 4. And so we're going to come out of the loop. Well, coincidentally, if you look at our 0, 1, 2, and 3, that lines up with our index numbers of each of these elements in these arrays. So 0, 1, 2, and 3 is exactly these index numbers, right? This was dog, this was animals of 0, animals of 1, animals of 2. And so we can use this concept that i is incrementing. We can use that to display each of the elements utilizing i. Here's what I mean by that. I'm just going to leave that c out there so we can see it. And then I'm going to do C out. I'm going to take that array name, which was animals. And instead of hard coding in now the 0, the 1, or the 2, I is going to be my variable that is going to be the 0, 1, 2, and 3. So as I loop through my for loop, I is going to increment by 1. And each time it increments by 1, I'm going to therefore be able to loop through and access each animal in the array. First time we go through the loop, I is 0. So animals of zero is dog. So let's just run this and verify it just to make sure that I didn't make an error. And I did, so it looks like I'm missing a semicolon. It made it pretty clear that you need a semicolon. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So now you should see that, um, oh, I'm C outing I out here. That's a little bit confusing. So let me reformat this so it's not so confusing. Let me put an end line on each of these so that way we're getting a clean, line each time we're printing something out. Okay, now let's look at it again. So when we see outed this first iteration, we call, by the way, each loop we also call an iteration. So I'll write iteration. Iteration is, is each time we are in a loop. So we're going to have four iterations, four loopings in this particular scenario. And that's the term we use. All right, so in the first iteration, we're gonna see out I i was zero and then we're going to see out animals of zero which is dog and that's what we're getting here so the same thing will happen on the second time we go through the loop i is one we can see that here i is one and so animals of one is cat and two animals of two is mammoth etc etc so that is an easy way, a great way for us to not repeat ourselves and still be able to loop through all of the data or to walk through all of the elements in that array. All right, let's look at this in a little different way. I'm going to comment out all of this hard work that I've done with my animals and we're going to look at it a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to create an integer and I'm going to call it iterations and I'll say iterations is equal to five. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to decide ahead of time instead of hard coding all these values ahead of time. What I want to do is create a array that is going to be filled on the fly. And I think let me just type this out here. I'm going to write um, int. So I'm going to create a variable uh, for my array and I'm going to call it numbers and I want to make it if I want to make this numbers five elements big or let's let's use the example of the animals up above. So if I didn't know ahead of time how many what I was going to put into my array like I knew ahead of time I was going to put dog, cat, mammoth and fish but if I don't know what I'm going to put into the array then this is how you create it. You, you at least have to say how many potential elements, what's the most amount of things that I'm going to put into this array. And so you give it a hard-coded number. So in this case, I would uh, put in four elements. I have room for four things in this array, similar to what I had up here. You can also either hard-code this number or you can use a variable. So I'm going to put this iterations in here and I'm going to say... All right, I want to create an array that's going to be that's going to hold integers this time instead of strings, and it potentially is going to have five places because I put the variable, I, I assigned this five to this variable. So now we're using a variable as a count of how many variables, how many data elements are we going to have inside of our numbers array. So this keeps us a little bit more um, dynamic. So you could either hard code this in with a five, or you can use a variable. So uh, let's see, I'll keep the, um, 
Well, let's see, let's keep the five here just for demonstration and then we'll switch it over next time. Okay, so let's create a for loop. Int i equals zero, i less than y. No, there's five elements in this array, so I'm gonna use the number five and then I'm gonna increment i by one. And the idea here is that I'm going to fill my numbers array each time I'm in the loop. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. Let me just demonstrate that. Let's do a math problem, i times five, and then we're gonna see out it. So what I'm gonna show you, I'm trying to show you here is, remember, i has a value. Each time we go through this loop, each iteration of the loop, i is going to have something in it. It's gonna be a zero, one, two, three. So what I'm showing you here is we're just kind of generating some numbers in each generation iteration that I'm gonna put into my numbers array. Let me just console this out so you can see what I'm thinking here. So what should happen is each iteration, i, which was zero the first time, is gonna be multiplied by five, so the first number is zero. The second number would be one times five is five, two times five is 10, three times five is 15, and four times five is 20. So my idea is that I'm going to put these values into this numbers array. So that potentially what will end up happening is, let me just give you an idea what this is gonna look like. So uh, numbers is, let's see, uh, number, let me do it the way we did it up above, int numbers is equal to, and then it's gonna be zero, five, 10, 15 and 20. Except what I'm doing is I'm not hard coding these values ahead of time. I'm going to use this loop to fill in those positions. So what I'm gonna do then is loop through and say numbers of zero is gonna be zero. Numbers of one is gonna be five. Numbers of two is gonna be 10. So I'm building this in my for loop, if that makes sense. So initially in this example, I have set aside five places, but that doesn't have any values in them. I'm gonna use my for loop to fill those values with this little equation that I came up with. So I'm gonna comment this out. And the way that you do that is, if you want to, uh, let me just hard code it for a moment. If I, let me hard code it up here. If I wanted to fill numbers of zero with a value, I just give it numbers of zero equals, and then I think we're gonna give it zero here. And then numbers of one, we're gonna give it, what did we decide, five? I'm just looking at this math problem that we created because ideally this is what we wanna end up with, right? So if I were to hard code all of this, all of this would work. So numbers of, I think you get the idea, right? And so equals 10. So what I'm trying to do is not hard code zero, one, and two with these values, I wanna use my loop. Because again, can you recognize repetitive code? And the only thing that's changing is this index number, which is also coinc coincides with the i element that I have going through this loop with my i variable. So I'm gonna comment this out just so you can see what we're doing here. So I'm gonna take numbers of i, so whatever numbers of i is each loop, numbers of i is equal to, and then i times five. So recognize that by doing this multiplication, I'm not changing the value of i. i is still maintaining its zero, one, two, three, four. I'm just saying when you just do a multiplication problem and put that result into whatever numbers of i is, number zero is number one, number two. And so that way we'll end up with a uh, array that we were anticipating right here. So let me run this and see if I can make this make sense. So I don't have anything C outing at the moment, so nothing is making sense. So let's do this. Let us, now that we've filled it, let's create a for loop. See lots of for loops here. I equals zero. I less than five, because there's five elements in this array. And now we're going to C out numbers of i. So now we're gonna actually print out and see what did we put in there. Did we in fact create this array that we had anticipated with our math problem here? So when I run this, let's see what happens. So now I am in fact getting zero, one, two, three, four, I mean, five, 15, whatever. 
So if you just want to prove that what I'm doing is, is actually outputting, my array is outputting the right thing, let's change this to two. And so we should see a little difference going on here. Let's see what happens. And so now we're getting 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So that makes sense. So here we're using our for loop to fill in, or I'm demonstrating that you can create an array with nothing in it. Let me reiterate that this part here. This array has five spaces, but they doesn't have any values. So you can give those values to an array by simply assigning the array number plus one of the index numbers, the position that you want to put the data in, and then your data. So there you're assigning zero to numbers of zero, fives to numbers of one, etc. But we can also do that in a for loop, so we're not writing code over and over again. So we're doing effectively the same thing. Numbers of zero is our first loop, is our iteration is equal to zero times two. So numbers of zero is getting zero. And then numbers of one is getting one times two is two. All right, and then here we're just looping through our array so we can loop and see each individual element in that array. So why was I doing this iterations thing then? What was the point of that? Well, the point of that is instead of hard coding in this five, I could use this variable instead. So instead of saying five here, I could say iterations. And so then what I want to make sure is my five changes here to iterations and my five changes here to iterations. And the reason I'm doing that is that keeps me even more flexible because if iterations ended up being, let's do something like 10, now what will happen is since I'm using the variable instead, numbers will be initialized with 10 spaces for data. We're going to loop through this for loop 10 times so that we can fill all 10 spaces with our little math problem here. And this for loop will also now iterate 10 times, loop 10 times. And so we can output and see all of those elements that got filled in this for loop. Let's just verify that that's working. And it looks like it did. Do I have 10 elements? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And it is doing the math problem that's expected. So this is an overview of utilizing uh, arrays and implementing our for loops in order to either fill or uh, display our array items. So in the next video, we'll do an example of uh, how we would use this.